CCP's National Security Department takes the front stage. Scholar, she's faction prepares for crisis. Anti-communism become a traffic code? Namely's new song The People of the Dragon is extremely popular. Thailand's largest coffee chain brand announces exit from China. Chinese universities start official parent groups, students completely break down, about to explode. Deterrence against the CCP, U.S. military B-21 stealth bomber begins production. It's all covered in today's China Truths. CCP's National Security Department takes the front stage, scholar, Xi's faction prepares for crisis. The Ministry of State Security of the Communist Party of China has recently taken on an unusually active role. Initially tasked with regime security and intelligence, it has extended its reach into various areas such as diplomacy and the economy, prompting analysts to unravel the underlying reasons. In September of the previous year, the Ministry of National Security of the Communist Party of China made numerous foreign affairs statements, even publicly discussing the potential attendance of the party leader at the APEC summit in San Francisco. By November, the ministry intervened in finance, imposing restrictions on short selling and impacting the Chinese financial market. They continued their involvement in economic matters in December, emphasizing the necessity to safeguard economic security. The ministry even engaged in a war of words in party media with Hu Xi, a figure who faced financial losses in the stock market. Beyond these cross-border actions, the Ministry of National Security has been notably vocal in the intelligence domain. Publicly criticizing agencies like the British MI6 and unveiling a recent spy case, the nature of which drew skepticism and dissatisfaction from the international community. Some believe that the Communist Party's Ministry of State Security is fabricating stories. Yuan Hongbing, an Australian-based legal scholar, stated that the apparent crackdown on foreign enemies is a cover, and the real focus is internal monitoring. The ministry has intervened at all levels within China, aiming to strengthen internal control. The expansion of the ministry's power is seen as a result of power struggles within various factions of the Xi family army as both the Ministry of National Security and the Ministry of Public Security vie for expanded influence. Yuan Hongbing explained that the power struggle is not merely about control but stems from the realization that Xi Jinping's personal dictatorship has reached its zenith. Officials seek to fortify their power structures to respond to crises and safeguard themselves, anticipating potential political shifts. Another motive behind the Ministry of National Security's expanded powers is Xi Jinping's desire to enhance his own security. With the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection serving as a disciplinary tool, she now aims to wield the Ministry of National Security as a sharp instrument. Officials' discontent in private has become commonplace, and Xi Jinping seeks to address this issue. Lai Jianping, a former Beijing lawyer and Canadian chairman of the Democratic Front, asserted that Xi's focus is on personal security, transforming the regime's security agency into a personal one. Consequently, the Ministry of National Security takes precedence and assumes control over various organizations, acting as Xi Jinping's imperial agency with significantly greater power. Lai Champing expressed concern that the nationwide arrest of spies by the Ministry of State Security could lead to severe social repression. The highly controlled suppression creates a delicate balance between the authoritarian regime and society, with any relaxation of control potentially resulting in disastrous consequences. Anti-communism become a traffic code? Namely's new song The People of the Dragon is extremely popular. Malaysian singer Namely's new Chinese New Year song MV, The People of the Dragon, is filled with memes in every lyric and scene, satirizing the CCP, Xi Jinping, and the color pink. Within two days of its release, the YouTube views exceeded 2.25 million. In Of the People of the Dragon MV, the mysterious man accompanying namely wore a Winnie the Pooh mosaic mask throughout. At the beginning of the MV, a winding dragon passes through a green background symbolizing leaks, but the dragon's head looks like a mixture of a dragon and Winnie the Pooh. Then, it displays the public screening permit electronic examination No. 2024 No. 8964, signed by the State Administration of Press, Publication, Radio, Film, and Television as Little Bear for You. The song starts with, 
We are all descendants of the dragon. We put on the cloak of Yen and Huang's descendants to conceal our identity as descendants of Marxism-Leninism. During the singing, AI synthesized Xi Jinping's voice harmonizes with Nan Li. Some netizens believe that the title of the lyrics, The People of the Dragon, is a metaphor for Cage the People, referring to the Chinese people locked inside the wall. In the lyrics, Nan Li writes, I am in Beijing, but my heart is in London, satirizing the recent incident of the London Pink Pianist, the Northern Myanmar Electricity Fraud Case, the CCP's incitement of national sentiments against Japan and the United States, and the flooding of oil pipelines on other overseas social platforms by trolls. Additionally, it touches on the different reactions of the CCP and the Chinese people after Japan discharged nuclear wastewater, the CCP's threatening remarks against Taiwan, the dynamic liquidation of the richest man's money, the hijacking of entertainment stars to kneel and lick the CCP, and the chairman wearing a dragon cannon, referring to Xi Jinping's dictatorship. At the end of the film, it even satirizes the CCP's elections. Those who object, please raise your hands. None. 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 In the picture of the MV, the word dragon in the opening title uses simplified Chinese characters. The character appears with symbols such as bear paws and the coronavirus, as well as China puppetry, Wei, sword and five tubes, martial reunion, Taiwan, poverty alleviation for all, white paper sword technique, Douyin scripture, reverse final fist, Guangfu clinic, little pink book, little bear for you, etc., clearly targeting the CCP and Xi Jinping. In the film, the emperor's Winnie the Pooh mask is removed, revealing another mask behind it, mocking Xi Jinping as a two-faced man who serves the people wholeheartedly while at the same time seizing power and embracing authoritarianism. Just two days after the song's MV was released, the YouTube views alone exceeded 2.25 million. The song is being discussed by various media celebrities and on social media platforms, gaining significant popularity. Thailand's largest coffee chain brand announces exit from China. Thailand's largest coffee chain and the world's sixth largest, Cafe Amazon, has announced through its official channel that it will temporarily exit the Chinese market starting January 27. Due to prolonged pandemic restrictions, the chain had reduced its presence in China to just 13 stores by April 2023. Jamian News reports that Cafe Amazon has further scaled down its Chinese operations to only three stores, all located in Nanning. According to Shanghuan News, Cafe Amazon had initially sought Chinese franchisees and agents at the Shanghai Import Expo at the end of 2023, with plans to open stores in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai. However, these expansion plans have since been put on hold. Notably, China's macroeconomic downturn and three years of pandemic restrictions have resulted in widespread business closures, layoffs, and unemployment. This economic impact is evident in the crowded Starbucks cafes, often frequented by middle-aged job seekers. Furthermore, China's coffee market is witnessing intense internal competition. For example, a report from the Guangzhou Daily highlights the launch of the Year of the Dragon Sauce Flavor Chocolate Drink, a collaboration between Guizhou Maotai and Luke Kin Coffee on January 22, which saw modest sales. In the summer of 2023, a fierce price war initiated by Luke Kin Coffee and Kudi Coffee, offering coffee for as low as 9.9 .9 yuan, approximately one US dollar and 38 cents, swept the industry. Tim's China CFO, Li Dong, commented that coffee priced around 10 yuan is unlikely to be perceived as high quality or professional by consumers. Given the intense competition in the Chinese market and the challenging economic environment, Cafe Amazon's parent company has chosen to shift its focus to Southeast Asia. Currently, Cafe Amazon operates over 4,500 outlets across 11 Asian countries, including Japan, Singapore, and Saudi Arabia. In 2023, they announced a 900 million US dollars investment and allocated substantial resources to expand their operations in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. Café Amazon has already established approximately 230 stores in Cambodia. Chinese universities start official parent groups, students completely break down, about to explode.
A rising trend of official university student parent groups in mainland China is causing distress among students, leading to feelings of being monitored and deprived of independence. The phenomenon gained attention when a university in Hunan mandated the creation of parent groups for first-year students, triggering discontent among students who felt their autonomy was compromised. Students expressed frustration, feeling like they were being treated as dependent individuals even after leaving their hometowns for college. The parent groups initially intended for communication and publicity shifted to monitoring students' academic progress and activities, impacting their freedom. Zhou Ku, a sophomore at Shanghai University of Finance and Economics, pseudonym, stated that shortly after the university created parent groups in the summer of 2022, he quickly felt constrained by parents and teachers working together. Parents were not interested in knowing what their children were doing, instead, they wanted to know why their children were not doing certain things. He mentioned receiving questions from parents like why didn't you get a scholarship and why haven't you built good relationships with outstanding classmates. He candidly pointed out that the school's intention to let parents know about students' academic progress and available subsidies took a completely different turn when it reached the parents. A counselor openly admitted that she and her colleagues often receive numerous bizarre requests including suggestions from parents that amount to interfering in school affairs, such as proposing gender-segregated classes or changing the allocation of guaranteed slots. With 30 years of counseling experience at a university in Heilongjiang, Lin Hong, pseudonym, stated that these types of parents are well aware of what they want to know. She described her work as being like an AI question-answering machine when dealing with such challenging parents. E.g., a counselor at the School of Finance at Capital University of Economics and Business, expressed that in the past, parents would create their own networks to confirm information about their children at school. However, whether private or officially established, she does not recommend the creation of parent groups. E.g. pointed out that within these groups, there are two distinct types of parents, those experiencing separation anxiety due to their children being away and strict parents continuing to pressure their children for better academic performance. E.g. revealed that parents of post-95s and post-2000 students, despite receiving better education than the previous generation, believe they have the right to dictate their children's education or want to replicate their own successful experiences. However, this often leads to premature interference and hinders growth. She believes the emergence of monster parents indirectly gave rise to official groups, with counselors becoming part of the school's shared responsibility. However, the tendency for parents to compare and set expectations among themselves is counterproductive to students' development, autonomy, and parent-child communication. Ichi calls for parents to personally participate rather than intervene and learn about their children's university lives through group interactions. Deterrence against the CCP, U.S. military B-21 stealth bomber begins production. According to a report from Breaking Defense, William LaPlante, the Deputy Secretary of Defense responsible for procurement and maintenance, stated in a release, the production of the B-21 Raider stealth bomber is advancing. Last autumn, Based on ground and flight test results and the team's manufacturing plans, I approve the commencement of B-21 production. Aircraft manufacturer Northrop Grumman, in a statement, mentioned, Northrop Grumman's B-21 Raider bomber has entered the initial production phase. The U.S. Air Force plans to purchase at least 100 B-21 bombers, with deployment scheduled for the mid-2020s. The B-21 will replace the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber and the B-1 Lancer Strategic Bomber. The B-21, with its nuclear strike capabilities, can deliver highly destructive weapons globally within 24 hours through connectivity with U.S. mainland and overseas bases, executing decapitation missions or nuclear strikes. Rebecca Grant, director of the Independent Research Institute, commented on Fox News that the B-21 fully utilizes AI technology. This aircraft is a long-range, stealth bomber capable of intercepting Chinese mobile missiles. The B-21 carries penetrating weapons designed for striking underground facilities, a capability not currently possessed by China. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has repeatedly mentioned using the B-21 to deter China. In addressing questions about a potential conflict in the Taiwan Strait, he emphasized that this stealth bomber could deploy mines to block Chinese naval movements right under the eyes of the People's Liberation Army. 
he stressed that the B-21's advantage lies in its utility as an asymmetric warfare tool, allowing the U.S. military to disrupt the delicate balance of power between the U.S. and China in the Taiwan Strait, effectively countering China's regional anti-access-slash-area denial A2-AD, capabilities. U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin issued a stern warning to China during an event on December 3, 2022, stating that the U.S. military possesses formidable deterrence capabilities and will never allow China to conclude that it can launch an aggressive war. Austin also stated that the U.S. will never allow China's attempts to expand in the Indo-Pacific region to succeed. The B-21 serves as a remarkable demonstration of combat capability and a significant advancement in U.S. deterrence. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.